rugged mountain peaks, clear blue lakes, the greenest capital in Europe, beautiful architecture, tiny sleepy countryside villages where time seems to have stood still. Slovenia is definitely a country worth a visit. Nestled between Italy and Croatia, influenced by Austria and the Balkans, Slovenia is yet another hidden gem, another secret digital nomad destination in Europe that is well worth a visit. While it might not be as inexpensive to live in as some of the other states in the region, it still is quite affordable for a country in Europe. It offers high quality of life, good digital nomad infrastructure and great nature. So let's have a closer look at Slovenia and see what it offers us from the perspective of a digital nomad. Slovenia, or officially the Republic of Slovenia, is a country in Central Europe. It is bordered by Italy to the west, Austria to the north, Hungary to the northeast, Croatia to the southeast and the Adriatic Sea to the southwest. It is considered to be one of the greenest countries in the world, with almost 60% of its territory covered in forest and its capital, Ljubljana, having been named Europe's greenest capital in 2016. The language in Slovenia is Slovenian, a Slavic language that is really difficult to learn. But luckily, particularly the younger generation does usually speak English. So in the cities and in the tourist attractions, you should have no problem getting around and communicating. When it comes to the weather, Slovenia has continental weather with warm summers and cold winters and snowfall in the mountains, which is a perfect opportunity for skiing enthusiasts. Slovenia is also part of the EU and the Schengen zone and uses the Euro as currency, with one US dollar currently equaling 0.92 euros. Though very small, Slovenia has a lot to offer to its visitors. Beautiful snow-covered mountain peaks and crystal clear alpine lakes. A short but beautiful sea coast of 46 kilometers, green forests, rich history, fairy tale like castles and modern infrastructure. And let's not forget about the super tasty food. But before we take a closer look at specific digital nomad activities, let's take a closer look at Slovenia's history, so you understand the country and the people better and can meet them on equal footing. Slovenia has had a tumultuous history. It has been inhabited since prehistoric times, has been invaded by the Roman Empire, as well as the Habsburg dynasty, probably the mightiest dynasty Europe has ever seen. During the Second World War, Slovenia was seized by Nazi Germany, and fascist Italy and joined the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia after the war ended. When Yugoslavia dissolved after the death of its president Josip Broz Tito, Slovenia and Croatia were the first countries to declare independence from Yugoslavia. thus making them the first countries in which the Yugoslav war broke out. If you want to know more about this very recent and very gruesome part of European history, you will find details on the Balkan war in the videos to the other Balkan states. Back to Slovenia though. So Slovenia breaks away from Yugoslavia and declares independence in 1991 and immediately claimed the border post of their new independent country. As a response, Yugoslavia sent soldiers of the Yugoslav People's Army. However, it was a relatively small number and their task was to retake control of the border. They did not expect Slovenia to have strong forces of militia and police prepared for them. Slovenia's new army surrounded them and cut them off from supplies and trapping thousands of Yugoslav troops in their barracks. The previous day, these soldiers had belonged to the same country. The next day, they were trapped in barracks on enemy territory. The same applied to Yugoslav citizens, who weren't Slovenian. Overnight, they became foreigners in what had been their own country. 
to de-escalate the situation, Croatia hosted a meeting between the new Slovenian president and delegates of the European Council, the predecessor to the EU. And Slovenia agreed to a ceasefire in return for official recognition of their state by the EC. The Yugoslav army in the meantime was planning an all-out attack on Slovenia, but was stopped by its most powerful member. Serbia. Unlike with other states that declared independence from Yugoslavia, Slovenia did not have Serbs or rather no politically significant amount of Serbs living in its territories. Serbia's president Slobodan Milosevic had his own nationalist agenda to unite all Serbs in Yugoslavia in one giant Serb territory. And since there were no Serbs living in Slovenia, the Slovenian independence was of no consequence to him. This thankfully made the Slovenian war the shortest and least gruesome of all the Yugoslav wars. Now that you've gotten an introduction to Slovenia as a country, let's look at digital nomad must-haves. Things you as a digital nomad would need to be able to set up your lifestyle in the country. First is always internet. Internet and Wi-Fi are fast and widely available in the bigger cities and you will find plenty of cafes as well as co-working spaces to get your work done. When you buy a Slovenian SIM card or one of any other EU country for that matter, you will be able to use it in the entirety of the European Union without paying data roaming fees. When it comes to infrastructure, public transport is also well established, affordable and organized in the bigger cities, allowing you to move around with ease. To travel around Slovenia or its neighboring countries, buses are also a cheap option. Flixbus, which I will link in the travel resource section of the description, offers cheap bus connections across all of Europe. And since Slovenia is in the Schengen zone, bus travel is convenient since you will not face any border controls while traveling within the Schengen zone. Another and preferred transportation mode of mine are trains. Slovenia is part of the Eurorail network and has great train connections with all of Europe. With the Eurorail pass you can actually travel across all of Europe by train, which is an environmentally friendly, convenient way to travel that allows you to see some parts of the country and get work done at the same time. And even within the country, connections are good and inexpensive. Now, to arrive in Slovenia, you might possibly fly in. Slovenia officially has three international airports, with the ones in Ljubljana and Maribor being the ones best suitable for international travel. To travel within the country, it is much more convenient to take some of the other means of transportation, since Slovenia is so small. Here, the option that offers you the most independence, of course, is car rental. It is also a good way to discover Slovenia. Especially due to its small size, renting a car and going on a road trip will allow you to really see a lot of the country and also visit some of the more remote, exceptionally beautiful corners of the country. You will need an international driver's license to rent a car. And if you are entering Slovenia by car instead of renting a car in Slovenia, don't forget to buy a highway toll sticker to put into your windshield and pay the tolls for the highway. In terms of accommodation, you will find the usual variety of accommodation options. Beautiful modern Airbnbs, hotels, hostels, guest houses. If you plan to stay for more than just a few short months, it is always more economic to find a rental apartment. Check out expert Facebook groups for help with that. Let's look at cost of living in Slovenia. Usually I transfer the cost of living prices to US dollar because I think that it is a very comparable currency for everyone. However, Slovenia is in the Euro region and the Euro too is a very common and very strong currency that is being used all over Europe. So today I'm going to keep it in Euros. At this point in time, by the way, one Euro equals 1.08 US dollars. A meal in an inexpensive restaurant will cost you approximately 10 Euros. A cappuccino will cost you 1 euro and 67 cents. A monthly transport pass will cost you 37 euros. Taxi starting tariff is 1 euro and 95 cents. And a one kilometer taxi ride will cost you approximately 1 euro. Should you have to wait in traffic for an hour in a cab, that will cost you approximately 17 euros. And basic utilities for an 85 square meter apartment for a month will cost you approximately 222 euros. Monthly internet will cost you approximately 
34 euros and a one room rental apartment in the city center will cost you approximately 523 euros a month. A one room apartment outside of the city center will cost you 429 euros a month. Now keep in mind that Slovenia and particularly Ljubljana as well are quite small. So even moving a little outside the city center will still allow you to reach the city center and all its conveniences quite quickly for a lot less of the price if that is something that you are sensitive to. Now that we have looked at the digital nomad must-haves, let's figure out where to stay, where to set up base. First on the list, Ljubljana. Slovenia's small but stunning capital is not only the place with the most experts and the best digital nomad infrastructure, it is also a very beautiful city. Filled with Art Nouveau and Baroque architecture, cobblestone streets, churches, a fairy tale castle, cafes, restaurants and parks. As I've mentioned in the introduction, Ljubljana was voted Europe's greenest capital in 2016, a result of the city's effort to make life here as eco-friendly as possible. Part of these efforts are its accessibility. Public transport, walking and cycling offer you plenty of great ways to get around here as a digital nomad. The city has tons of cute cafes that you can work in, as well as a couple of nice co-working spaces. Of course, you will also find all other city conveniences, like museums, restaurants, bars, gyms, yoga studios and the like. And during your free time, there's plenty to discover, both in the town and during day trips. This is actually one of the benefits of the size of the country. You can easily travel and discover a lot of it. One site you can't miss is the aforementioned 16th century Jubiana Castle, parched over the city and reachable either by taking the funicular or walking up. You will have an amazing 360 view over the city from this vantage point. If you buy an entrance ticket to the castle, the return funicular ticket will be included in the price. To really experience the beautiful architecture of the city, take a stroll through the cobblestone old town and marvel at the colorful buildings. You will find many nice cafes, bars and restaurants here to hunker down and get some work done. Slovenia, by the way, has fantastic food. They pride themselves in using fresh and local produce and have been influenced by their neighboring countries like Italy. You will be able to enjoy a variety of fantastic seafood dishes, fresh vegetables and heavenly desserts. It is, by the way, also a very good wine producer and you will be able to take part in some great wine tours close to the border with Italy or just enjoy a glass of local wine in any of the restaurants. The Cathedral of St. Nicholas is also worth a visit. It is known for its beautiful Baroque exterior with the ceiling inside being covered with gold details and beautiful frescoes. For some green space in the city, head to Tivoli Park, the largest park in Ljubljana. It is a great place to hang out, read a book or people watch. Inside it, you will also find the botanical gardens with even more impressive plants on display. If you would like to spend more time outdoors, there are plenty of great day trips from Ljubljana. About 45 minutes drive from Ljubljana, for example, you will find the beautiful city of Bled, by Lake Bled. Probably one of Slovenia's most popular photo motives, and for good reason. Bled itself is a beautiful little town, with the star of the show definitely being Lake Bled. A beautiful lake with turquoise clear water, perfect for a swim or some water sport activities. In the middle of the lake you will find an island with a beautiful little church. You can visit it by taking one of the wooden boats from the shore of the lake. Tradition had it that Slovenian couples that would get married would come here. The groom would have to carry his bride up the 99 steps to the church and she was not to speak a word during this time. This was supposed to guarantee a happy marriage. The area is really stunning, but also relatively touristy. At peak times there is a good chance that the island will be quite crowded. Also be warned that the restaurant prices here reflect the popularity amongst tourists. So if you are on a budget, consider bringing your own lunch. To enjoy a view over the entire area, head to Bled Castle. 
which looks straight out of a movie set, set into the mountain wall with the snow-capped mountains in the background. Since you are in the area, don't miss another natural spectacle, the Vintgar Gorge. This is a narrow gorge covered with greenery. Follow the boardwalk path across the wild waters of Pradovna River. It will lead you to the spectacular Shum waterfall. You can take a beautiful circular hiking route around the area to experience even more of the natural beauty here. And for some extra exercise, you could even hire bicycles in Bled to come here. The distance is about 4 kilometers. For a more extensive outdoor adventure, visit Triglav National Park, which is also home to Slovenia's tallest mountain, Mount Triglav. Here you can spend either one or multiple days emerged in nature activities such as hiking, swimming, kayaking, rafting and even scuba diving or paragliding. There are beautiful rustic mountain huts and guest houses you can spend the night at. In my Digital Nomad Destination Guide to Hungary, I mentioned that Hungary shared some pretty impressive cave systems with Slovenia. Actually, Slovenia is full of them and many are worth a visit. For the purpose of this video, we will look at one of the most popular ones, Skokshan Cave. This enormous cave is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and features one of the world's largest underground canyons, underground rivers and even its own ecosystem. For more adventures underground, head to Prejama Castle, Europe's biggest cave castle, built right into the rock formation. From the castle, a secret escape tunnel leads to the nearby Postojna Cave. You can buy combination tickets for both experiences. Postojna Cave is a special experience. You will enter the cave on a little train and then have the chance to explore. You will even find a dedicated ball area, chandeliers and a concert hall. Not to mention, of course, the absolutely impressive rock formations, stalagmites and stalactites. If after all this time underground, you would like to spend some time by the very short but very beautiful Adriatic coast, head to Piran. This little town is famous for its Venetian architecture and town squares and its beautifully preserved old town. Sit in one of the restaurants and enjoy the fantastic fresh seafood and during summer you might be in luck and even spot a dolphin or two. You can drive along the entire Slovenian coast from Italy all the way to Croatia in about three hours. So if you wish to see more of the area, just go for a little road trip. There are plenty of more things to occupy yourself with while in Slovenia. Beautiful mountain villages, picturesque little towns and a very diverse nature from coast to Alps, which also offers a lot of activities for winter sports enthusiasts. But for now, I hope that I've been able to give you an impression of Slovenia, so you can decide if this is a country that might interest you. So let's check out the visa options. As usual, for shorter stays, the easiest visa option is a tourist visa. Keep in mind that technically, officially, you are not allowed to work on a tourist visa, though almost all digital nomads do. But this means that you need to make sure that all your income comes from digital activities. Now, since Slovenia is part of the Schengen zone, you will have to get a Schengen visa, which will allow you to enter the Schengen zone for 90 days out of 180 days. Check out the video up there for more information on the Schengen visa and its procedures. If you would like to stay for longer in Slovenia or the Schengen zone, the video explains as well how you can up in and out of the Schengen zone to make sure to extend your stay as long as possible. Unfortunately, at this point, Slovenia does not have any digital nomad specific visas that allow you to stay longer. There are options to enter Slovenia on a work visa or for family reunion reasons or to study, as well as ways to set up your own business 
and then work in Slovenia. However, these are quite complicated and the application process is really lengthy. So this is only something that is worth the effort if you really plan to stay and live in Slovenia for an extended period of time, which kind of defeats the purpose of this video being for just digital nomad. So for that reason, unfortunately, my only recommendation for visa stays in Slovenia right now is the Schengen tourist visa. If you would like to extend your stay in the region but outside of the Schengen zone, check out my recent videos about Romania, Serbia and other Balkan nations, such as for example also the almost unknown Bosnia and Herzegovina. And with that said, thanks so much for your time. As always, go see this beautiful world of ours for yourself and keep exploring. Bye bye, see you next time.